Hello, and welcome to this video lecture on more about pivot tables in Excel. Pivot tables do allow you to filter just as you can filter in any set of data in Excel. So it's very useful when you are trying to analyze just a portion of the data you're looking at, especially in this day and age of big data. You can also set up slicers for filters that you use repeatedly just to make the data analysis a little bit quicker and easier. When you're working with live data, you can use pivot tables to create a snapshot of how things look at a particular time. This, of course, means when you are updating data on a regular basis, you may need to refresh your pivot tables in order to get the most current analysis of your data and summarization of your data. You do this using the refresh option found on the pivot tables tools analyze tab. Excel also comes with some built-in pivot tables for things that are very commonly used views of data that you are going to be collecting. A lot of data that you collect is based upon business transactions, could be sales, and these are easy things to predict what users might want to analyze. So they're taking the fields that are in your spreadsheet and creating some recommended pivot tables. In addition, you can do pivot charts. So you can create that graphical representation of what's on your pivot table through the use of a pivot chart. These, of course, can also be filtered just as you can filter your pivot tables. Here we have our basic uh, pivot chart showing sales by type of widget, basic, complex, and programmable by day of the week. Instead of showing them all together, we could analyze these and filter down just based on widget type. So I could take and pull this widget type from being a column field to being a filter. This way, I could say, just show me the programmable sales, and I can easily look at it. Maybe I also want to see both programmable and complex. So I would check the multiple items, and then I can select multiple fields right there. And now I'm seeing a combined, and you can see when I hover over here and select this, complex and programmable. So very easy to set up that filtering. If there is a filter that you're using regularly, of course, I can come over here to analyze, and I can insert a slicer based on widget type. So here it is, and I can make that match my pivot table colors here. You can see if I clear it, now I'm seeing all widget sales. So I could say just show me the basic, use the control key, basic and complex, clear the filter, and show all of them. Here's a little thing you want to keep in mind. You can place this as you want. And then up here on your options over in the size group, at the very end, I can change this. I may want to make this 2.2 inches wide or in height and 1.5 inches wide. Oh, 2.2 looks a little tall, so I could go ahead and keep changing it there, or I can use that button, get my white arrow, and I can resize here to make it just fit the data that I have. You want to make sure you leave enough room for all your words to be seen and your title and still see the Clear Filters button. Now, if I go back to my data, this view, I'm going to go down to the end and I'm going to edit some of my data because I believe my programmable data for Tuesday June 6th was actually $21,958.40, not the 11. When I go back to my pivot table, and if I look, clear my filters, I look at my totals. This is showing my data before my edit. In order to see my data 
current and reflective of that modification, I need to go to my data, my pivot table tools, analyze, and refresh my data. And when I refresh this, this should go up by the $10,000, and it does, that I made that change over on the widgets over here. Today's widgets are us, because that increased by 10,000. And when I refreshed my table, my total increased by that amount as well. Let's take a quick look at the recommended pivot charts. So I'm on my data. Go to Insert, and here we see next to Pivot Table, I see Recommended Pivot Tables. And I get a dialog box. For this data, I'm only seeing two, two views. So let's take a look at it. Sum of Sale, Total by Widget Type. Let's select that one. It will create our pivot table. We can rename it. If we need to, we can change the design so that it's matching with our others in this worksheet. And this, then we just need to come over here and set our numeric formatting. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and change our labels at this point up here. We could call this Sales. And there's one of our recommended views. The more data you have, the more variety in recommended pivot tables you will have as options. We can also create a chart from here. So under the Analyze tab, while I'm working on my pivot table, I can create a pivot chart. Again, because I'm currently working with fairly simple data, I don't have many options, but I could choose a column, a line, a pie, whatever I wanted to a column. There we go. And that might be more representative. We can move that around. We can edit that so that the fill color is matching our data, those types of things. We can change the elements so that we remove the legend because we just have sales here and so on. You, of course, can still filter this. If I wanted to, I could take out some of that and just show you a portion, a slice of things. When I'm filtering, you'll notice when I filter my pivot chart, so when I filter here, it impacts the actual pivot table as well. So if I add that back in, it shows not only up on the chart, it shows up in the pivot table. So pivot tables, pivot charts, and just some additional things you can do. Very easy to use.